tell us a little about yourself and what motivated you to run for office. Okay. Well, my name is Andrew Felker, and I'm a citizen of District 2, ready to serve the people of the district. I am uh, grew up in southeast Missouri, a small town called Sykeston, if you've heard of it. Uh, I'm the, one of seven children. My dad was a physician, my mom a school teacher. And uh, we've all since made our way uh, away from Sykeston. And I went to law school at Mizzou, met my wife there. We had three children in Columbia. And then after we came here in 2011, uh, had two more. So we have five kids. Uh, so we have four and soon to be five in the school system next year. So we'll, we'll be in three schools next, uh, next fall. Why did I come to run? Well, I, I'm also an attorney in town. I work for the law firm Chinnery Evans & Nail. Uh, I've been a shareholder for a few years now and uh, love to serve the people that I have the chance to interact with, whether I'm doing estate planning or business or real estate law. So, And why do I want to serve? Well, I've always wanted to be a part of a great community. When Sarah and I moved here, I don't think we knew how good we had it. I mean, that's something as I was reflecting upon coming in, I don't think we knew how good a community Lee Summit was until we've lived here for a couple of years and it just keeps growing and growing on us. And so I've, as I've thought about it, I've thought, you know, I wanna be involved in the community. I've tried to be involved uh, in different ways through different volunteer opportunities. And the opportunity came up uh, when, uh, the time for filing came around there was uh, our current legislator our current councilman decided not to run and i thought you know what this maybe this is this is it get the chance to get out there and serve the people of the district and find out how we can help make a, a wonderful city continue on the great path that it's on okay next question how will you balance serving your district with your service to our city yeah that's a good question you know, I think a council member really does wear two hats. I mean, that's a, that's a reality. Um, I would have to be able to take the bigger picture uh, into, into account when we're making decisions. And yet the reality is I've got to go be accountable to the people of the district and want to meet their needs. So there's going to be times where there'll be some very district-specific uh, matters that I'll, I think it would be important to champion, to, to get behind and try to motivate the council members to see why a certain issue may be worth their attention as well and at the same time i mean i work in <clears throat> district one so i mean i'm i'm that way i i want to be able to see what's going on there as well and and so i have kind of a vested interest as well there so so i think you take a, a balanced approach and when you're working with seven really eight other people in a legislative capacity you have to be able to interact and collaborate with them. And so I think as I bring the needs of District 2 to, to, the, to the council, I'm, I'll, you know, hopefully I can, again, be a persuasive influence on the other members of the council and, and listen to their, their needs and be able to accommodate the, the other needs of different districts. So I think it's a balance. Okay. The city charter clearly defines the relationship between the city council and city staff. Okay. D please describe how you envision your working relationship with city staff. Well, what I am learning is that they know a lot. They've been doing what they do for a long time. They're in a lot of ways experts in their relative, um, their fields. So I think as a council person, you will look to city staff for a, a degree of expertise and some in information and know-how and history that I simply won't have. So I, I think I'd rely on them. I'd look to them for, for uh, guidance. At the same time, a, a council person is not just supposed to take orders from really anyone for that matter. You're supposed to weigh all the information and input that you have. So I think there's times where you have to ask questions and sometimes the way things have been done are not the way they should still be done. So I think there's times where you're, you're gonna ask questions, um, hopefully try to get to the bottom of uh, what the current problem is and use that that expertise to really address a current issue. So, you know, and I think there's also simply the understanding that, uh, that you know, our job is to hire the city manager who then goes out and, and make sure that the, he has good staff on hand. So we have to trust that process as well. So uh, I don't think there's, the role of a council person is not to go really 
uh, behind, if you will, uh, the proper leadership channel. So I think you got to play your role. But I, but there are th those resources are there for a re uh, reason. Those employees who have been doing these things and, and they can help. I think uh, the council person be really informed as we approach an issue, um, and and weigh the different options that we have when they're presented. Okay. What do you consider major challenges and priorities for Lee Summit, and how will you address? Well, I think our the mantra of economic development is going to be something we're going to always talk about, and it's absolutely the, if not the the most important thing because it underlays everything else we do in the city. So as we uh, and, and that and that entails not just new economic development. I mean, we're where we might be doing new things here, we might be redeveloping there. So we have to take all of those pieces into, into account, the, the new areas that need to be developed and those well as those that, older areas that, that need a, a, a facelift or a, a total uh, rehabilitation. And so I think that economic development, especially with the PRI land, and I think as that moves forward, we will see some of the other kind of smaller owners that kind of surround those areas begin to say, okay, now it's time to move forward with their developments, so with their, being able to develop their property. So there's a lot that will be going on. Is it going to happen right away? I think we all know that this is a, a long-term process, and so I want to be a part of that initial vetting, if you will, of what are, where do we want to be when we're long after the time I serve as a city council, on the city council, where are we going to be? And so I want to be able to, to, to be a part of that conversation, be able to take input from all the people involved and have a forward thinking approach where, as I think of it, I think that economic development is going to be responsible, meaning we have to take all aspects of what a city needs to thrive in a, into account. And it needs to be balanced. It's not just residential. It's not just commercial. It's a it's going to be a mix, and I think we know that, and I think developers know that, and so hopefully we have that to, to put into play. Uh, obviously, when we think of uh, development and growth, we want wherever we're developing to continue to have you know, what Lee Summit's known for, its quality of life. We want to be able to have uh, you know, public safety is a vital part of that, our different amenities that we know of uh, that are so uh, well regarded, whether that's our parks and rec or good relationships with our school districts, all of those, it, it's, a, it's such a comprehensive process. I mean, it's not one thing, but, but I, I think if I were to capture it into that, as we think about development, it, it will bring all of those pieces to play, into play and into consideration as a council member um, myself and the council as a whole. Okay. Do you believe economic development should be a primary focus of city council? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I, I mean, again, if it's not, well, how are we going to continue to to offer the things that we do as a community? Um, and you know, if we we want to obviously there will be opportunities and pockets for for can more people to come here. People want to be in Lee Summit, and that's going to continue to be the case. Uh, but to continue that, we have to be able to have the kind of uh, commercial backbone, if you will. The uh, I like to think of Lee Summit. We've talked about this in other meetings uh, with some of you in the room before, how the flow of people out of Lee Summit to work and the flow of people who work in Lee Summit, now that number has, has been shifting. It, is it, it, we may still have a net out, if you will, outflow, but that's a number that I think we can continue to work on creating the type of uh, economic uh, infrastructure, if you will, where more people come here or, or simply stay to work. I'm, I'm grateful I get to be one of those who gets to drive just a few minutes to work each yeah. each day so does the current economic development incentive policy provide appropriate tools for sustainable economic growth so I think the answer to that is yes I, I will say that there I mean the the different policies I mean ideally economic incentives would be something that uh, we didn't have to have in place. I mean, I think that's the ideal world, but the reality is that there are some areas where uh, maybe there's a, a blighted area, uh, maybe there's something that needs attention, and for a developer to see that as worth um, his or her while, th those incentives may very well play an important role in, in moving the project forward uh, and perhaps investing a bit more into what what ultimately will be uh, put in place. Uh, but I don't think it's just blight. I mean, the reality is there are other economic development projects that may not be 
uh, we're gonna, we have a lot of green space that's going to be developed. And so uh, we need to look at those and see, you know, are there incentives that, that will make sense that will have where the, the long-term investment will be a good return for us. So again, it, it's ideally would we want to use those incentives because that's a, perhaps, you know, we're talking about tax base and what's, what do we have to do other, what do we have to do with those other funds that we may not have in uh, full effect anymore. But, but I think that with a, with each project, our job, my job as a council person is to, to look at it and evaluate is this, does this make sense for, for us right now? And will this have the long-term effect that uh, we really want to be able to maintain public safety, to maintain our parks and rec recreation, to maintain our different you know, infrastructure that we need to have in place to have the kind of community we want? Okay. You may have just answered this, but when would economic incentives and enhancements be appropriate? Did you say when? When. Yeah. So again, obviously the uh, blighted areas and I think when we talk about those opportunities where there's not apparent blight just having a, a measured and thoughtful approach to the process I mean we have to look at what is it that what is it that the city would be giving up and um, or is there enough of a return that it actually becomes a, a net positive so I think is there a hard and fast rule I don't have one Perhaps I'll develop one, and, and, and to be honest, I'm sure if, as, if anyone in the room who's served on city council or in that role, there's probably things you begin to start benchmarking in your own mind to be able to, to know how to do that. So that may be something that I'll, I'll develop as a, as a council person as I analyze the different situations that we have. Okay. How does Lee Summit continue to become the place to live, work, and play? How do we continue to keep it? Yes. So. We talk about schools, we talk about, and I'm not a candidate for the school board, but I, you know, the city and the school have to play together. Uh, so, you know, I, I think the city has to have a really good relationship with our city council, has a really good relationship with our school board. We saw the couple weeks ago, I'd say last month, when they met together, and I think that was the first time it happened in a while. I know it did happen. I don't know, Mayor Rhodes, when it happened some time ago, but, um, but you know, that kind of interaction I think will be key because there are ways that those two governing bodies can interact I think that would be uh, helpful uh, we we need to we have a great parks and rec system uh, I have my father-in-law is a park planner out in Billings Montana and he comes to the annual conferences each year and he said Lee Summit is the poster child for what it is to have a good parks and rec department and that's a and that's coming from again someone who's out in Montana so and I and my kids we all go to those parks I, I know what it's like so it's great it's a wonderful place to be so keeping those kind of things strong you know we have uh, commitment to to those programs as well as other cultural amenities I just think walking I used to walk with my kids on uh, mostly it was Tuesday nights when they'd go to piano practice I'd take them through City Hall which I kind of like a museum whatever artwork sometimes it was the high schools and sometimes their local artists would have paintings up and I always thought what a what a great thing to take them through um, I hope they remember it that was special so okay. cooperation diplomacy and mutual respect are necessary to ensure the appropriate process established by our charter and existing ordinances what leadership experience do you have that has helped you prepare for the level of professionalism required of council members well you know I think about leadership and I think it has to leadership involves a lot of things it involves relationships it involves showing and giving respect and really earning other people's trust so First, that I'll go to one of the points, understanding people and, and gaining their trust. And you asked about leadership experiences. Uh, this may not seem like a leadership experience. I worked as a nurse's aide for four or five years and uh, took care of people in, in, uh, in, in what I would consider compromising circumstances. And you have to really gain people's trust to work with them. And that's not every day. I'm not going to do that for anyone here in the room, probably. But interacting with people, being able to understand what their needs are, and being able to help them from where they are to the next level, 
that's valuable, and I think it's something I do. It's something I do every day in my my profession, as in a, helping folks out with their estate planning, with their business matters. I'm analyzing a problem. I'm trying to understand what the situation is, and as I understand that, I think they trust me to be able to direct them to take the next step. Uh, respect and and relationships, and in that regard, I think about interacting with the council because leadership is not just being at the top or not just being in the front sometimes it's being amongst everybody and being able to work together and have relationships that work i mean i i know when I, mean, I think of the candidates running now not my district or my district and other districts and current members of the council i'm sure there are ways i will differ in my opinions and my perspective but what i my personal experience in life is i feel like i get along with people and i can with that, work toward finding solutions to problems so that at the end of the day, we may agree or not agree, but at the end of the day, we can work together to, to, to find what's the best solution for Lee Summit. Okay. What is Lee Summit's role in supporting and contributing to the cultural arts? Well, I mentioned City Hall earlier. Like I said, that that may just be one little window, if you will, for me into my personal experience that that was valuable. Uh, are there ways in which you know, we can uh, contribute or promote different cultural amenities, arts, uh, performance center? You know, we talk about what's going on at Parks and Rec when we have the uh, performance venue. Uh, I'm not, I remember the name of what it's called now over at uh, the park. but. There's different ways, then. I think that there is absolutely a role the, the city plays where, you know, we have obviously the private individual is the one who's going to create the art, create the, uh, what we'll, we all will then enjoy. But if the city can play a part in promoting that, I think it's great. Uh, you know, it's what is part of the many things. As I think about, we'll go back to this idea of why is Lee Summit so great? Is it one thing? And again, everyone in the room here knows it's not one thing. It's not one organization. Uh, it's not one person. It's a whole host of things. And so if there's a way we can continue a reasonable, reasonable support uh, as a city for those kind of cultural amenities, then absolutely, let's keep it up. Okay. <clears throat> How does Lee Summit maintain and continue to improve its remarkable amenities such as parks, cultural arts, and wide variety of entertainment options? Yeah. So we've talked about economic development. Obviously, we have to have a good tax base to be able to provide the funds that take care of those things. So, uh, you know, we. So. I go back to what we've talked about earlier. We need to make sure we're promoting responsible and balanced development. So responsible in the sense that I think when, when projects are brought before the council, we need to think about how, how is this going to impact the city. When we talk about what kind of incentives we do or don't give, uh, again, we've got to have a long-term approach to how uh, those programs or incentives may or may not be appropriate. Um, you know. Thinking through, we should think through the process. Okay, if we're going to develop all this PRI land, we're going to need a place for schools. We're going to need, need a place for fire stations, perhaps other police stations. Do we have, and, and have we thought through what, what does that take? Um, you know, certainly everyone who comes to the table will want what, what they want. Um, you know, we got to make sure we we can take care of those things and then but knowing that uh, there's not an uh, uh, there's not an infinite pot of resources so uh, the role of a, of a legislator is to say yes and no to the to some things and sometimes it'll be a, a welcomed response sometimes you've got to take the the approach that not everyone will agree with but is the better again long-term approach so we've got to have good economic development to be able to take care of those different amenities and we need to keep those in the forefront so that when we're doing the development it's not about just getting uh, you know certain aspects of the infrastructure in but kind of thinking bigger picture what are those what are all the other pieces that really make up the cultural and day-to-day uh, -day infrastructure that we live in so okay. please explain your understanding of workforce development 
and how we best leverage. So workforce development, obviously we want to be able to have a, a great workforce in Lee Summit. We want to be able to have the people who can provide, who can provide the jobs and also go to work. Uh, so, you know, Lee Summit made a, a, took a step to support uh, Velocity Lee Summit, um, decided to put some resources behind that. I think that's a, a favorable decision. Uh, it's not, so that's one element. Again, it, this is going to be a multifaceted approach. Velocity Lee Summit continuing to support uh, EDC and, and recognizing that when projects come in the door, we need to, to see what kind of jobs are coming with those projects so that the, if there are incentives involved, we want to make sure that they are key toward that. <clears throat> um, you know, there's the, the concept of workforce development is an idea that I continue to think about. You know, are there ways to offer retraining? I'm not sure if it's the city's role, but is our role to, if you will, connect with the different services that other other organizations, whether uh, nonprofits or otherwise, that can help facilitate helping people get back to work. I mean, even if you think about things like Hillcrest Ministries and the work they do to take someone in a very difficult spot and train them, we can learn some lessons there. We need to make sure the city is uh, is aware of that. Um, I think as a, as a council person, I would want to look at what's what's in place now and are there other things we can do to facilitate that. The city doesn't, it does create some jobs, it does train, if you will. We do offer things that are going to help uh, train, uh, but most of that's going to be done in the private sector and we want to make sure that we can help facilitate that process. Okay. What is your vision for the Lee Summit Airport? Well, I know we've, as I understand it, have reached kind of a, uh, not a capacity point. Uh, we have been growing. I mean, as as uh, was said a few weeks ago at the chamber lunch, I wish I remember the number, but the number of, 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 of planes that were renting space had, had grown considerably since we'd expanded. So I see it as a, I mean, again, I, I work pretty close there, so I think about what does that, what role does the airport play? I think it, play, it plays a pretty big role especially as we look at what we hopefully will happen across the street from my office. I say across the street, I really mean across the highway. When that develops out, I would love to see that become uh, really a commercial hub. You know, the corporate woods of Lee Summit, we can come up with a better name because we're Lee Summit, but uh, something that will be a, a, a good place for a lot of business activity. Uh, so I think the airport will play a, a huge role in that, being able to provide the kind of services that it does now and just continue to look to see, okay, what other ways can we use the airport to leverage opportunities for business owners to want to make their home here? Okay. What would you most like to accomplish during your term? Well, when I, I'll tell you one thing that's really maybe not that big of a deal, but it could be for some, and it's really not even, it's on the edge of, it actually may not be on, in my district. It's connecting Purcells and the crossing. If anyone knows where that lovely intersection is, it's right where the uh, Rock Island Trail comes across. So I'm, I understand that actually the, the pieces are in place for that to happen now. So um, whether that occurs before I get there or after, that's one thing. Um, more importantly, I, do I have a specific project in mind? Do I have something? I, I really don't. Uh, what I do have in mind is I want to be able to get to know the people of District 2. I want to find out what's important to them. I want to know what's going on with you know the members of City Council now and be able to, to kind of bring those two things together. I'd love to see <clears throat> uh, to see that the, the master plan that the city's talking about now, they've talked about kind of a uh, 14 to maybe a 16 or so month window of developing out what is what comes what is after the ignite process. So after ignite is wrapped up, there's this still kind of a strategic plan that's going to be going on. So that will wrap up pretty soon, pretty early on in my term, uh, first the first uh, year or so of, of my term as a council on the council. So I'd like to see what that is. I don't want to be able to be a part of that, seeing what long-term approach we can take, having a thoughtful, um, taking into thoughtful consideration what what different things we can do to make the ongoing development of Lee Summit a positive thing. Where, like we've said earlier, where we can want people want to come to work, to live, to play. Okay. What's your long-term vision for Lee Summit? 
Well, long, long-term vision for me, really, I think about my family. So, and is it a town that continues to grow? Absolutely. Is it a town that has a thriving business community? As I said earlier, part of that vision is seeing the, the flow of workers, that net flow to, to shift more towards Lee Summit. So I want, I, I use the, uh, the words uh, employment epicenter, and that may not be the right terms, and I'm sure some uh, may not be the, the best way of describing it, but a place where people want to come to work. So I want it to be a, a place where not only people want to work, but my kids, when they grow up, they want to come back. When they think about where do I want to start a family, where do I want to make my career, I'd want them to think, okay, even though mom and dad might still live there, maybe I want to live there too. Um, so hopefully that is what I see as a place where people continue to want to come. I mean, we all know that Lee Summit really is a, a jewel in the Kansas City area and in the state of Missouri. Um, and so doing the things that we've talked about in terms of maintaining all the different pieces uh, and, and, and considering that we have to give thoughtful attention to that economic development as it grows, as we consider the different pieces that come into play, uh, will make it possible for us to have that long term. Okay. Andrew, that was all the questions. Uh oh. Um, so you've got, oh, you've got ten, five minutes. Okay. Tell us anything you want to tell us. Well, I'm excited to get out. I mean, to be honest, what I'm most excited to do right now is to get out and meet voters. I want to just hear what people are saying. I want to understand what what's going on in the lives of the people of Lee Summit. I have my world that I live in, and it's an important world to me. I, I, I know wonderful people that have been a, a blessing to me as I've grown in my personally and professionally. And so on top of that, I want to get to know more of the people who live in my district and find out what's important to them. I want to see <clears throat> see us as a city take I think we're on a good track right now. I think we're having some thoughtful conversations. I think the council's working together well, and I, I want that to continue. I want to, I, the, when I think of those who are on the council presently, I think they're a, a great group of people, and I, I'd, I'd want to continue that kind of collegial atmosphere where, hey, we, we work together to find solutions to problems. So I'm excited for that opportunity. I look forward to, uh, again, the chance to meet voters and find out what their needs are and, and try to connect those as we look at, as we think about it, as you look at what a voter is asking for, what they're, what's important to them, we then analyze that, try to understand the problem, and then come to a solution that, that works. And that's really what I think city government's about, is finding what, what works. So looking forward to that. 